playoffs, and EA Sports continues its coverage of Super Wild Card Weekend. It's the Pats and the Steelers under the lights on Sunday night. EA Sports coverage of the NFL playoffs brings us to one of the most storied postseason venues in the league. Akershire Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania sold out once again. Tonight we wrap up a great Sunday here in Super Wild Card Weekend as it'll be the New England Patriots taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hello everyone, welcome to the postseason on EA Sports alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, that's really all I need to say to get you fired up. It's the postseason on EA Sports. And no one's more fired up than the guys who are going to be playing in this game. This is what they fought for all year long. Go back to the OTAs, the mini camps, training camp throughout the season to get to the playoffs. The intensity level will be off the charts. The third of three games to finish up this Sunday. We might save the best for last. And off we go here in the wild card round. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by the pride of Wyoming in his sixth season with one of the league's strongest arms, Josh Allen. And he comes off of a really good regular season with over 4,000 yards passing. And now in the playoffs, people always ask the question, do you continue to play the way you played in the regular season? Do you turn it loose? Or do you tone it down a little bit? I think you've got to be smart. But make sure you show the defense something they haven't seen before. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. Blitz coming and down he goes. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack. And it'll lead to a third and long. But just two plays in and Charles already their first sack defensively. Yeah, how about that? That didn't take long, did it? And now they look at third down. And that's another time to try and go and get the quarterback too. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. To throw, it's Allen. And that is incomplete. That is their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Davis now to return it. A good kick that time, but also a pretty good 15-yard return. And the Patriots take over. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Bringing them out, a guy who's top 30 all-time in yards and touchdowns. Not bad for a fourth-round pick back in 2012. Captain Kirk, Kirk Cousins. And he comes into this wild card round off of a really good regular season, better than 30 touchdown passes. And he said he feels like he can take some shots against the secondary. In fact, in our meeting, he said not only can he take shots, he expects to do it early. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. And again, it's Chubb. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Steeler offense set to regain possession. I guess you could say they're kind of fortunate to be in the position that they're in, able to host as a division champ, because it's really one of the weakest divisions in the NFL. And there's often the discussion every time, right, that fourth seed, should they actually be hosting? Because sometimes it turns out that division winner has a lesser record than wildcard teams that get in, and some people think that'd be a more fair way of doing things. But I gotta tell you, I first 
does he like it? The winning a division title, I don't care what the division, how it's ranked, it still means something to me, and I like the fact that they get the host. I think that that's the reason you have the divisions. If you didn't just stack them all up and take the best six records, but there's a division for a reason, the champion hosts the first round. And the first rule of thumb in building a team, build a team to win your division. Beat those teams first, then you go from there. On first down, Allen. Open man downfield, that's Smith-Schuster. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 56 yards. What my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. Now Allen again. Throw right side, going to be taken in by Henry. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Henry will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. With his size, it often takes more than one guy to get him down, but if you can at least slow him up and the reinforcements arrive, you have a chance to get him on the ground, and that they did that time for a loss. Allen now on third and goal for the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. And his kick is good. So the long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out with a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that, that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Now a second down throw for Cousins, eluding the pressure right. Now he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. They go off the middle with Chubb. And a pretty good burst there as they get this across midfield and down to the 46. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Cousins here going to change the play. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. That'll be caught by Cup. And I think this is a round we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. To throw, Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. The Steeler defense locked in, forcing an upcoming fourth down. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. And that will tie us at 3-3. That was perfect. From distance, he steps up, knocks it right down Main Street. And Main Street's celebrating right now with him, aren't they? I love the mechanics of the whole thing. Snap, hold, everything was right on target, and the blocking was perfect. 
and he executed so, so well. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they've got it with a second down and two coming up. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. The Steelers on third down. Just one for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Work in the middle of the field. And he's got a man complete. Still on his feet. CeeDee Lamb. And into the end zone. for that they pass it they score it that had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator you've got four downs here we're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third go ahead and take a shot if you want to and he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that if they didn't get it there that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down extra point right down the middle and the lead is now 10-3 to three. out is the kickoff unit as they run up Send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience... How much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Now a second and ten. Cousins to throw it. They'll roll him out right. That's out to Chubb, complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Third and short yardage, Cousins. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And they're going to themselves another first down as the tackles made at the Steelers 36. To throw is Cousins. This one complete to me, Cole Hardman. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. And the ball on the 30, here's second and four. To the air again, it's Cousins. A quick pass to Cup. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. They're going to take this to about the 10-yard line. 42 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. First down throw for Cousins. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Cousins now on second down. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're 
forcing incompletions and fighting to keep him out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Trenton Simpson. And the Steelers will take over here at their own 14-yard line. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game, and that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Had an open man that time and ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now that'll try again on second down. Keeps himself upright. Able to hit his target land. Oh, he sheds himself free. Taking it right down Broadway. CeeDee Lamb. And into the end zone. Touchdown. CeeDee Lamb. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Steelers go up by two touchdowns. What a first half he is compiling here. He's already over 100 yards receiving and now two touchdowns, CD. Brandon, you know I don't like to play the game where you start projecting when you're at a certain point. But let's face it, he's off to a tremendous start. So 200 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think anything's out of the question right now. He's blowing up coverages. You've got to double him every snap. Otherwise, he's going to defeat you on almost every play. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. New England's offense set to go. They trail early on the road in the playoffs. Not a great combination as they've got it first and 10. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. He had over 100 catches in the regular season, and now he's got his first catch of this wild card game. Cousins now to throw on first down. This to Arnold on the short pass. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second down, Cousins. That's down the field for Jefferson. And this is caught at the 20. Touchdown, Justin Jefferson. 62 yards. And the Patriots have cut it back within a score. Extra point by Butker is on target. And that slices the lead down to 17-10. The kicking unit out for the Patriots as they send this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. From a star in college to a star in the NFL, CeeDee Lamb at wide receiver as he brings out this offense. He has certainly made the most of his catches so far, both of them going for touchdowns here in half number one. And we've never met a team that doesn't talk about getting off to a fast start and featuring guys that they want to have the ball early. We're seeing both of those come into play here. Off to an incredible start. Got their feature guy going, and now everyone else should have opportunities. So the shotgun snap to Allen. He'll find Lamb. That's complete. A gain of five good enough for the first down. Talk about a big first half. Already has the two touchdowns. Adding to his receiving total there, picking up the first down. He's coming off the line so fast. I think he's intimidating the defensive backs with his explosiveness, and he's chipping away at their confidence. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and it's second down. 
As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Again, they'll throw with Allen. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 30. into his left. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. On second down, here's Allen. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. He hit his first, this one from 38. And his kick is good. And they double the field. That makes our score 20 to 10. So a captain over a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a choke hold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So we're at halftime in this AFC wild card matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. This, the last of our three games on this Sunday. One more to follow tomorrow night as we wrap up a very exciting three days of Super Wild Card Weekend. We'll begin our tour out at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, where it was definitely a game with some intrigue as you can see by the scoreline. Jordan Love, another strong performance as his guys claim victory number 13 on the year. We were treated to a solid first half of football by the great quarterback, Josh Allen. He came on after a slow start to fire two second quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead at the intermission. Plenty of adjustments likely being made by both teams in their respective locker rooms to find out who advances to the divisional round. Let's get you back out to Brandon God. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams try to avoid being one and done in these playoffs as we start the second half of this AFC wild card game. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Cousins on first down. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. They go play action. Cousins. That's into a crowd and intercepted. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. So after the INT, it's Allen. On the out route, it's Lamb with a grab. They'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. And officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. A first down carry for Henry. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. On second down, here's Henry. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. It's now third down and four. Here's Allen to throw it. And the find the open man. That's complete. And it'll be touched down here, but not before he does pick up the first. They'll try to run for it with Henry. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Extra point splits the uprights, and that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. From his end zone, here's Darius Davis. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. First down. Here's Cousins. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Throwing on second and long. Cousins toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. They give him credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. Now Cousins. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with a football. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. On play action. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags, and I believe this is going to be a first down. So a potential big play by this defense wiped out by the face mask. And disappointing because it was so unnecessary. They had the sack, but the officials are definitely keeping a close eye on the quarterback, especially the referee. They were able to spot that one immediately. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop it behind the line. Allen looks to throw on second down. And he goes down. It's a Patriots sack. Eric Kendricks came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lop one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And this one is incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And in the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Third and short yardage, Cousins. 
Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Cousins again. Going out wide, finds Chubb. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. From the red zone now, Cousins. Touchdown, Patriots! Cooper Cup, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Pats are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Cousins will try and throw. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two, they don't get it. For a few years of two point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. Allen now on first down. And he's caught by Lamb. Now he's into the clear again. And into the end zone. Touchdown. C.D. Lamb saving his best for the playoffs with his third touchdown of the game. And the Steelers continue to show why it pays to play at home in the postseason as they add on to their lead. Here's the Steelers' kick team as they'll boot this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good. But there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check. But he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, it, you do. It you makes get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. A big play there for New England. 46 yards. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Again, it's Cousins. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. To throw is Cousins. Look at the big fella go. Touchdown! Mark Andrews, 31 yards. And the Patriots have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. They'll try and throw for it. And now the pressure gets there, and he goes down. So he couldn't get rid of the football, and that deficit stays right where it is. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage, just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you try to throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. Allen off the play fake, rolling to his right. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down, so he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. 
Allen going to throw. Able to get away. They'll buy some time right. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. The scramble good for a nice gain of 10 yards, but still fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Returnable here for Davis. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And they will take over first and 10. Throwing, Cousins. Big strides, look at him go. Look at the big man rumble. Touchdown, Patriots. Mark Andrews with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Patriots have made it a one score game again here in the fourth. They'll look to throw. And they don't get it. They tried for the two point conversion there, but unsuccessful. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst. If they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he gets this one just shy of 40. they mark him down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, giving 14. Throwing now is Allen. And he is caught by Smith-Schuster. He's got room at the three. And he's going to be shoved out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 47 yards. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he's going to take it in for a steal touchdown. Derrick Henry, his second touchdown of the night. And the Steelers will add to their fourth quarter lead. Allen will try to throw for it. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth-quarter lead. And, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver. Ball's put on him. Two points for them. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. New England trying to get to place on offense. If they want to advance in this divisional round, look, obviously the time is now. Trailing here in the fourth as they go to work on a crucial, crucial drive, first and ten. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Throwing on second and long. Cousins. And that is incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. He's got his target. That's complete. And they worked this well upfield across the 45. A first down throw for Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Meanwhile, Cousins throw into the hands of Andrews. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 23. Cousins. Yet Turnover there as his guys will get the football back. They'll try and choose some clock with Henry. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Gets it to Smith-Schuster on the jet sweep. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. That's good for the Pittsburgh Steelers. First and 10 at the 39 yard line. Henry up the middle, trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. At the 38 yard line. They sent the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delay of game. Offense. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. And I know it's hard to find solace on one side when the season ends no matter where it ends, but especially in the playoffs because there's all that build up to the moment. But I would imagine the post-game locker room speech It'll have a pretty positive spin. It should. They've, they've made a heck of a run to get to the playoffs and have that chance to, to advance, even though they didn't. But you're right about how much it's going to hurt. Because when you work that hard to get this far, it hurts just a little bit more. No matter when your season is,